Snapper, good morning, what's going on? The, uh, this lesson I did yesterday, a <laughs> lot of attention last night. I appreciate all the comments and the questions that came from it. Uh, a super quick follow-up question that came from it is uh, my stance on motivation. When I was talking here about passion, passing the eye on and suffering, I was asked, where does motivation, where does motivation fit into it? Check this out. On this axis here, there's really three states that you can be in. You can be balanced with equanimity, straight down the middle. You can be positively charged or you can be negatively charged. In physics, atoms are balanced and neutral. Though, when they become an ion, when they become charged particles, the degree of their charge depends on the ratio of electrons, which are negatively charged, and protons, which are in the nucleus, that are positively charged. If they're equal, they're balanced with equanimity. But if an atom starts losing electrons, then it will sway this way and become more positively charged. And if it starts gaining electrons, it will sway this way and become more negatively charged. In psychology, we have two levels of awareness. Conscious awareness, unconscious awareness. We split life down the middle. When life comes at us at the speed of light, it's balanced. Like I said yesterday, there's no charge. Life comes at us with no charge. There's, there's, the universe is balanced. Life is coming at you with equanimity. You split it in your mind based on your judgments about the world. When something happens to you and you judge it and you say, this is really, really, really good, all the downsides and drawbacks are in your unconscious. So when you're consciously aware of all the upsides and you're unconscious of all the downsides and drawbacks and negative charges, you become net positive. You have a charge, you're a charged particle. And what happens to positively charged particles? <laughs> they attract negatively charged particles to balance them out. Opposites attract. The positivity will attract negativity. In physics, the more positively charged the ion is, the more power it has in attracting negatively charged ions so that they can collide together and balance out. It's called ionic bonding. In psychology, the more positive you are, the more you'll pull into elation. Extended elation can cause pride. When you are in a pride state, you think you're above everyone. And in sociology, what happens when people are in pride states? They attract humbling circumstances. They attract haters to pull them back down to earth. The pride before the fall. Now. What's happening in society at the moment is we have this positive thinking epidemic. A lot of people think that they ought to be positive and happy and up. Why is there such a big epidemic at the moment? <laughs> My feelings is that it's an economic reason. It, positivity sells. In positivity, in elation, in euphoria, in infatuation, we have the feel-good hormones that are released in the brain. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. So if you can sell people a one-sided fantasy, positive thinking, all the glory, all the euphoria, all the happiness, they will eat that shit up because they don't know the reality of the universe. Telling people that life is not about positivity or elation or happiness, but about ambition, embracing both polarities, doesn't sell as well. But in my experience, in my opinion, it's, it's the truth. It's the true truth. So I will never be ever promoting one-sided fantasies in my products. Someone once told me that truth will never be in the hands of the masses. They'll be in the hearts and the souls of the masters. I want to make masters. I'm not here to get people to beat their chest and write down how prideful they are. Because in pride, in elation, in euphoria, in positivity, you're going to be attracting the negative circumstances, the humbling circumstances, and you'll get pushed back here. And depending on who told you you should be positive and elated and up and euphoric and prideful, you could go and beat your head against the wall thinking there's something wrong with you for not being able to sustain it. But... No one can sustain it. It's physics. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with you if you get prideful and you get positive and then you get beaten back down. That's normal. But if you go and subordinate to a teacher who's teaching partial truths, who's teaching positivity, and you're back here depressed and you think that this is your north star, then you'll forever be chasing it. You'll be chasing the elation, the euphoria, the positivity, the pride. You'll be chasing it and you'll keep bashing your head against the wall, keep attracting the humbling circumstances. This is what passionate people do. They keep bashing their head against the wall, wondering what the fuck's going on with them. And eventually they lose patience, they lose energy, they lose self-worth. But if they're very, very committed individuals to getting this feeling of positivity and elation, they will engage motivation to get them over there. And motivation is nothing but a collection of polarized rhetorics based on pleasure and pain to get you to do something that's not that intrinsically important to you. Don't hope to motivate people. I don't want to motivate people. Some people say, oh, I'm very motivated by you. God, I hope not. That means I'm projecting my values onto you and you're trying to copy me. No, there, there is no need for motivation when people are doing what they're here to be doing. When you're following your soul-guided purpose, you have inspiration from within. You don't need motivation.
every morning I wake up and I roll out of bed and I look at the river and I think, what the fuck can I go and learn and teach today? I want to go and be doing these Snapchats. I love doing this. <laughs> Going to the gym and getting a six pack and big fucking strong arms is not a high value of mine. It's not my sole guided purpose. I need motivation to, to go and do that shit. And to have some goals that you're not really that inspired to do, but you need motivation, that's perfectly fine. But if you dedicate your entire life to doing something that's not inspiring, then you're gonna have a tricky old time on planet Earth. You're gonna need motivation, and you're gonna have to become passionate passing the eye on left to right. And isn't it so peculiar that in society we have a stigma saying if someone's motivated and passionate, that's really admirable traits of theirs. It is, but it's not mastery. So in summary, you have to figure out where you want to play in the game of life. If you want to have a life of suffering and be passionate and be motivated, that's fine. But if you want to be a master, that's different. Personally, I'm dedicated to mastering. I want to be master. I want to be a fucking master. And I want to teach other people how to be masters. That's what I'm dedicated to personally. Snapper, what's going on? Robin's just on the phone. Wrapping up some affairs before bed. There's a big fucking helicopter in the sky. Big noisy motherfucker. Look at this. Look at this. Is that the full moon? That's a big moon. Hey, I'm doing a. Uh, we're going. I'm doing bed now. Over the course of the next eight hours, your job, if you're watching this, is to blow up my Snapchat and tell me what's the question of the day tomorrow. By the way, check out the time. And check out the temperature. I'm sweating like a fucking gypsy up in this bitch. Snapper, good morning. Look at me. Say good morning to Snapper. Yes. What's going on?